Hello and welcome. Today we're working on financial analysis or the financial ratios. We're working with profitability ratios today. Now if you're new, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn where we're working on all the different ratios and here we're working on profitability ratios. Now profitability ratios relate to how profitable our company is based on various stages of the income statement and based on what we've invested and so on. Now there are several different categories of financial ratios. This is one of them, profitability. There's also activity or efficiency ratios, liquidity, which is short-term debt and current assets and cash, market ratios that relate to the market price, and solvency relates to long-term debt. Now, we have five different profitability ratios that we're going to talk about today. And we're, one is going to be the gross profit margin, and that's on the income statement. The first three are income statement only, the operating profit margin, and then the net profit margin, or sometimes it's called return on sales or ROS. Now to do the last two, the return on assets and the return on equity, we need to have both the income statement and some balance sheet numbers. Now let's look at Apple's income statement. And so Apple has an income statement for the year ended September 2023 and 2022, and we have these numbers. And one of the problems is they're so large, it's hard to really comprehend you know, what these numbers are and what they mean. So here it's in millions of dollars. So our sales in this example is $383 billion. Well, I can't really imagine a million so it's hard to imagine a billion. So one of the things that we do is we use financial ratios. One way to, uh, you can do this is to do a common size and do everything as a percent. But one thing we really care about is the profitability. So let me uh, highlight a couple of things here. Let's highlight the gross profit. So you have sales. Now sales could be called net sales or revenue or total revenue or total sales. All that means the same thing. This is the top line on the income statement. And then you'd have cost of sales or cost of goods sold. And this would be what it takes to produce that revenue. And then you'd have gross profit. Now sometimes gross profit is called gross margin. Well, what if we told you we had 169 billion of gross profit? You think, wow, that's amazing. Well, we need to figure out as a percentage and that might make it easier for us to understand. We've kind of put it in terms of $1 with, with 100% or whatever. Another way to do this is we look at the research and development expenses and the general and administrative expenses, and we end up with our total operating expenses. These are costs that it takes to run our business. So now we have operating income. Now this operating income can sometimes be called earnings before interest and taxes because the next line we take out interest a lot of times and then a couple of lines below that is taxes. So sometimes you hear this called operating income as EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes or it could be called income before interest and taxes. So EBIT sometimes is a quick way of saying this operating income. Now EBIT and operating income are generally the same thing, but you have to really look at the actual income statement. That's gonna be a middle number along the way. So we're gonna highlight the operating income, and that's a number we wanna look at. And then the final number, we take out our uh, income, other income, other expenses. A lot of times this includes things like interest expense and interest revenue. And then we take out um, and get a number called income before income taxes. So that's another profit number. And then we have a net income number. We take out the taxes and we have a net income. So our three ratios that we're gonna work on right now, let's show, let me show you what we have. We have the gross and the operating and the net profit margin. Well, what do you think the formula is gonna be for these? And I have formulas over here. We're gonna show it in a, in a different way, but let's look at the income statement only right now. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of the income before income tax number, which a lot of times we call EBT, or earnings before tax, EBT. 
So here I'm going to get rid of the highlighting. How do we calculate our return? Well, if we take our gross profit divided by our sales, we would come up with some kind of percentage. And so our percentage here would be something around 44%. What does that mean? Well, for the year 2023, we made every dollar in sales, we made 44 cents in gross profit. Well, operating income, we can figure out a profit here. We can take the 114 divided by the original sales, and we have another percent here, and that percent would be a little bit less. And so it says for every dollar in sales, we get to keep after we sell our product or service, after we pay operating costs, we get to keep about 29.8 cents, almost 30 cents in operating income. Well, what's our net income? We can do the same thing here. Our net income is going to be 96,000 divided by the original sales number. And so this, in this case, we're going to make it also a percentage so it's about 25.3%. Now, so one way we look at this, these are all ways to measure the first profit, and then after we paid you know, our uh, cost of sales, our second profit, if you kind of think about it that way, is after we pay our operating expenses, and then kind of our final profit number, the net income. So for every dollar in sales, we get to keep about 25 uh, cents, after we pay our product, after we pay for running our company, after we pay interest, after we pay taxes, and that's what we get to keep to invest in our business. So this is the way we started uh, analyzing an income statement. And so we've kind of formalized that with the profitability ratios. So let's, let me show you the formula. For the gross profit margin, we already did this, but this is gross profit divided by sales. So I'm gonna start with a equals and calculate gross profit divided by our sales. Now we know that's 44%, so we're gonna make it a percent. And now with Excel, I can just uh, copy across. And so last year in 2022, we had a gross profit margin of 43%. Now we have 44%, a slight increase. Now let's keep going with the operating profit. And our formula, we can call it EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Now, what do we call it here on the Apple income statement? They called it operating income or income from operations. This is our earnings before we pay interest here and taxes here. So one way we can get EBIT is we can take net income plus the income tax plus the interest. Now, this is not necessarily interest right here. Um, this would be the interest expense and the interest revenue netted out. So, but we do know that's going to be the number operating income we're going to use and call it earnings before interest and taxes. So in fact, let me highlight all this and use this as uh, percentages so I don't have to format this again. So what is our EBIT? Earnings before interest and taxes. That's going to be our operating divided by the sales of the same year. So we know that's 29.8. Well, what was it last year? Well, last year it was 30.3, a slightly higher number. Now the net profit margin or just profit margin. Now, if we say something like profit margin, then we generally mean net. If we say profit margin, then we usually specify if we want it to be operating or we want it to be gross. So if you just hear profit margin, then you might want to clarify and say, do you mean net profit margin? And they say, oh no, I meant the gross profit margin. So you're taking fewer things out, so you want a higher percentage. And then the final percentage is going to be the net profit margin or return on sales, or sometimes they just call it profit margin. So our net income divided by the sales, the total sales, the net sales, however you want to say that. There's several different ways to say the same thing. So that's 25.3% and 
it apparently is the same uh, percent for the previous year. So we can see that that is um, just the way it worked here, just by chance. It's probably not exactly the same number because, but at, at one decimal place, 25.3, it's gonna be the same. Kind of interesting here. Well, yeah, and you see over several decimal places, it is gonna be a little bit different number. But Apple was very consistent from 2022 to 2023. Now we have two ways to measure the um, profitability. And one, both of them are gonna take a balance sheet number. One's gonna take assets or total assets divided into net income. And the other is net income divided by equity or total equity. Well, over here we have below, we have a balance sheet. And so our total assets are way down at the bottom. And then our equity, remember the balance sheet is assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So the second part of the balance sheet is liabilities. And then the bottom part of that liabilities and equity section is stockholders equity. So we're gonna use those numbers here and I just have moved them over where we have an example here. So I just need to calculate net income. I'm gonna to point to the net income Net income for the first year is going to be 96,000 and we're going to divide it by the total assets to get our return on assets. So that's 27 and percent. I'm going to copy it across so we can now uh, check our work here and, and see how this works. So what this means for every dollar we have in net income, um, we're dividing by uh, the assets. So at the bottom, we have assets of 352 billion. We have a net income, I think was 96 billion at the top. So it says, look, for every dollar of assets, we're making 27 and a half percent return. So if we have um, assets that we've invested in our company, then we're making a positive return on those of 27.5%. So would you be willing to borrow money at 8% to get a 27% return? Yes, you would. Apple is profitable. We can do the same calculation except divided by equity. This is what the owners have claimed to. So our return on equity, we're going to take net income, 96 billion, divided by the total stockholders equity. And this number is 156%. We're going to copy it across 197%. So it means for every dollar, for the first year, every dollar invested as equity, we've made uh, 156% or $1.56. So we're very profitable as a return on equity. Now, how do we analyze this? We analyze this by looking at the history of Apple, or we can analyze this by looking at competitors. We would pull Microsoft and figure out their gross profit margin, their ROA and return on sales. And we can look at other companies or we can look at industry averages. And we're going to figure out how profitable Apple is compared to another company. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.